from EPAWA Weather Consulting headquartered in Worth Whitehall, Pennsylvania. This is Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are those of the forecaster alone and may not reflect those of the staff of EPAWA Weather Consulting LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. Good Sunday morning to another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, December 29th. I have a ton of information to go through in this video, and uh, it's going to answer most of your questions that you may have, uh, not only with a pattern and what changed, uh, but also some short-term icing issues, some longer-term snow potential, and I'm going to clarify everything that we went, went through when I wrote the long range on on Friday and a lot of people took that as winter cancel it is not winter cancel it's not even January cancel okay we just changed the temperature probabilities from below average to slightly above and we took the above average snowfall and moved it back to below average that can certainly change though and that is variable throughout the month it's the reason we do the updates every single week I'm just going probability based, which all long range outlooks are. They are probability based. They are not finite. They are not specific. And I think that's where we have the disconnect with the general public thinking that we're putting a forecast out for, you know, in November for December. We had the overall idea right in in uh, with the warmer than average temperatures ending the month of uh, November and again in December. And we're changing a little bit for, for January just because I see a little bit of a delay all for analogs, but we're not changing the overall thinking of how the rest of the winter plays out. Not winter cancel whatsoever. So I'm going to go through that in this video. In this video. Uh, it's the holiday week, so the moderators are off, so just please pay attention to the specifics in this video, and I'll give you as much information as I can uh, to try to answer those questions, because we won't have people to answer the questions on the Facebook page or any social media for that matter. Eagles-Giants today, later this afternoon, big game. I'll be watching that. I won't be around either. So a lot of things going on. Uh, today. So we're going to take a look at this uh, uh, long range first. This is the long range uh, we put out Friday, and this is what scared everyone. We had this, uh, uh, obviously, the above average period here at the end of the month and to begin January. That was expected, going through about the 5th. Then we had this period between the 6th and 9th, near to slightly below average. This is probably going to be closer to not really near average. It's going to be slightly below average during that time frame. We are going to get a cold shot during that time frame so between the 6th and 9th, maybe the 10th. I think the 10th you start to climb out of it, you're closer to average. And then we went back to slightly above average for the remainder of the month. I don't think, I don't think as I'm looking at this right now, that this 23rd to 29th period is going to remain slightly above average. We will turn slightly above average after this trough lifts out. But this end of the month, last week of the month here, probably doesn't end slightly above average. I'll explain all this in the video here. So we have this rain system coming in. Uh, today, this afternoon, is going to go right through Monday evening, and there's going to be a significant amount of rain involved with that. There's going to be some areas getting between an inch and inch and a half of rain. There's also going to be some freezing rain involved with this for some areas of the higher elevations of far northeastern PA, maybe far northwestern New Jersey, uh, but more likely to see significant icing in southeastern New York. I'll show you that map here in a second. Another area of showers coming in here uh, around the 3rd and 4th. And then we have, I, I have listed here, rain snow showers here for a clipper feature redeveloping. This has changed in the overnight, and the guidance has trended toward a thread-the-needle type storm. What do I mean by that? The pattern overall is warmer. You have a quick shot of cold air coming in, which we outlined between the 6th and 9th. You have the opportunity, if you get a storm system, to thread the needle in this time frame here when you have the cold. Because you don't have very many opportunities overall here in the month of January until we get to the, maybe the tail end. Again, I'm probably changing this here. The uh, opportunities are very limited, but there is on all three models, GFS, European, and Canadian, all show a storm here in the 7th, 8th time frame, and a significant storm at that, okay? You can get that kind of thread-the-needle situation here, which can change the snowfall projection here from below average to near average, maybe even above, okay? You just have to thread the needle. Thread the needle is what happened in uh, 2016. Remember, we had that big storm, and, and some areas got over 30 inches of snow. I'm not talking about this here for the 6th, 7th, and 8th. That's not happening, okay? But some areas got 30 inches of snow, and the entire winter as a whole, you may, you may have got 40 total. So the rest of the winter was crap, but you had that one huge storm, okay? That was a thread the needle storm in an, in, in an otherwise crappy pattern for the entire winter, basically. And you had that one storm at the end of January that dumped all that snow. Thread the needle. That's what it is. You have to take advantage of these time frames here. 
Does it mean it's going to happen? No. Can it happen? Yes. Okay, so we're going to watch this time frame here. Uh, it says 5th and 6th, but the models are overnight are suggesting 7th and 8th. I'll show you here in that video also. But this is what scared everybody. Temperature went to slightly above average, plus 2 to plus 4, when it was minus 2 to minus 4 in the previous outlook. I'm like, oh my god, what change? Why the sudden change? We do these every single Friday. We change and adapt this to things that we can see that are observed. Okay, Still going with the slightly above average precipitation. We did have this below average for the month of a whole, uh, as a whole. That can change if we get a, a hit around the 7th, 8th, and maybe again at the end of the month. So this is variable. Don't let this spook you, okay? No bearing on the rest of the winter either. Here's what average snowfall is. December is going to average at these totals. The only areas in our, uh, our areas within our coverage area that's going to be uh, near average is going to be up here in the scranton Wilkesbury area. Everywhere else is going to be below, slightly below here in Newark, but everywhere else is below average in terms of snowfall for the month of December. That is how this is going to end because we're not expecting any snow through the end of the end of this year. This is what average January snowfall is. You can still get these, okay? It's going to depend if you get one of those thread-the-needle systems. And that's going to be in that tight window I gave you, 6th and 9th, and again, maybe the last week of the month also, okay? So we'll see. We'll see if that stays below average or not, and if that does, in fact, affect the region. First things first, we have freezing rain tonight into Monday morning, just for the higher elevations, mainly, in the far northeastern corner of Pennsylvania and maybe far west, uh, northwestern New Jersey. Again, higher elevations. The pink areas here, actually the white areas are nothing. You're just getting rain start to finish. The uh, areas in area A here, the pink areas, these are a trace up to 0 0.09 inches of ice accrual, favoring elevations for those higher end amounts. And area B was, is, is within our coverage area as well. 0.1 to 0.2 inches of freezing rain. This is going to occur probably like late, uh, late this evening, it's going to start off as rain today, and then as the temperatures drop and get uh, to 32 or below, we'll have that uh, rain freeze on contact in those same areas, again, favoring elevation, and then uh, we get to Monday, it goes back over to rain, may end as a little bit of freezing rain Monday evening before it ends. So there's your totals. This sea area is, is uh, getting up to the lower Hudson Valley, that is out of our area, uh, so that's not it, uh, affecting us. So that's your freezing rain potential. Again, that's uh, late tonight overnight into early Monday morning. So what changed in a short time? The biggest thing that uh, is, is killing, if you want to say that, killing January's overall outlook. And again, overall, for the month as a whole, averaging is going to be above average. We will have transient periods of cold shots between the 6th and 9th and maybe again the last week of the month when we flip. And it can be tied to, this T, to the uh, stratospheric polar vortex, and that is sitting right over the pole, right over the polar regions, and it is strong. You don't want a strong polar vortex over the polar regions in winter because what that does is it keeps all the. This is looking at the. Uh, look, if you were taking a look at the, uh, at looking down, sitting over the pole, looking down toward the equator, across the entire globe. So this is the entire globe on a map, looking straight down. Okay, so the this is where the polar polar regions are, and anywhere of the Arctic Circle. If this if this is where the polar vortex is located. You're not going to get the Arctic air to budge further south, and it's going to have a difficult time doing so. You're going to need other factors in order to dislodge some cold air, and we're going to have one of those factors uh, happen this week. This coming in about a week from now. That's going to dis not dislodge this, but it's going to get some other factors that will get at least some of this cold and a trough into the eastern United States, all albeit temporary, because this polar vortex is going to remain here. Okay, This is stronger than we thought it was going to be when we're doing these long-term projections. We look at uh, what, you know, is this going to be strong this winter or is it not going to be strong? And the odds were favoring uh, the, the autumn precursors to a weak, uh, weaker polar vortex that's more easily displaced or split uh, were there. So we're looking at all these factors here. We had uh, a weakening quasi-biennial biennial oscillation, the QBO. The extent of the Siberian snow cover was above average. So this all leads to a weak PV. Uh, the low solar activity state leads to a weak PV, and the generally warmer Arctic regions during the fall months. These are all signs that said to us, okay, well, the polar vortex is going to be weak, so uh, we should be able to displace this cold from the Arctic and get a cross-polar flow and all that good stuff and get uh, plenty of cold in here for winter. Well, so this is, uh, this is not what we expected. And going forward in time this is going out to the 13th of january the evening of the 13th the polar vortex is still there now it does displace a little bit 
but this is really inconsequential in the grand scheme. I think this has a time limit. The polar vortex can't remain this strong forever. Okay, this has a time limit. It is going to the same processes that allowed the polar vortex to get that strong in the first place are going to be the same processes that are going to be responsible for its undoing. Okay, and that's going to happen during the second half of January. This only goes through the 13th, and it's still intact at this point. I think after that is where we get, the week after that, we get a breakdown of this polar vortex, and it finally uh, start gets displaced and, and, and allows some cold air to start getting in here. And other factors will start taking over the pattern, which are more typical of winter. So I think there will be a time limit to this. This is not going to last forever. We are going to have an overall milder period through at least the thir first three weeks of the month. Maybe the last week of the month you turn colder again. But uh, the period, except for that one little uh, thread the needle period I talked about, the January 6th to the 9th, you're not going to have, uh, you're, you're generally going to be milder than average throughout the rest of the month. And as the month as a whole, even with a cold fourth week of January, even if that does occur, uh, you're still not going to save January in terms of monthly average when you're taking the, the entire month and, and, and blending it together as a mean. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's examine the temperature periods. This is early January, January 2nd and 3rd. We're going to have a ridging on the into our region here. There's going to be a trough uh, in the western United States and getting into the uh, Midwest, or into the Plains, I should say. And uh, this setup here, if you look up here, there's a, there's a low up here in the Gulf of Alaska. There is also very cold temperatures up here in Alaska right now. And it's brutally cold, some 50 to 60 degrees below zero temperatures were found this week up here in Alaska. So it's very cold up there. And this is a big part of it why. You can't have a uh, Gulf of Alaska low like this and expect that we're going to have cold temperatures in this region. We need something to be dislodged. You need some kind of, this is ridging right here. You need this ridging to kind of dislodge this. And, then, and what's going to make that happen? Well, we do that uh, look at the Earth from the uh, polar region looking straight down again. So this is looking at the entire globe, northern hemisphere. All right. See this low right here? Uh, and I can't pronounce this. It's, it's O-K-H-O-T-S-K, the Sea of uh, Ohats, or something like that, I don't, whatever it is. There's a low here that will eventually form and is going to kick this ridge east. So everything has a downstream effect here, okay? So this low that's out here, North China Sea, and there's a ridge right here, and there's the low. Okay, this is the same time frame I showed you in the previous image. This just zoomed out. So we're under that ridge here at this point, okay, right here. We got ridging here. This is going to kick everything east like this, okay? The presence of this feature right here is what's going to do it. And that's going to kick this ridge east. When the ridge is kicked east, so is that low. And look what happens. That trough, that cold air comes right into our region. This is January 6th. So you get all of this cold coming into our region. That's going to last for a couple of days. It's not going to last forever. Again, that polar vortex is still strong up here in the polar region, so it's not going to... Uh, be a permanent thing. As a matter of fact, if we go forward from that, we start getting ridging in here when you get past the 10th of the month. And we're going to stay warm, I think, for the next 10 days or so, maybe 14. Okay, and then we turn cold at the end of the month once that polar vortex finally uh, eases up. All right, so it's very strong right now, and that's the reason why we don't keep we don't lock into any pattern. We're going to get the shot here, but because that ridging is going to kick that low east, and then we're going to have uh, some ridging going into Alaska, some colder air is able to bleed eastward. So that's where you're going to get your uh, your cold period between the 6th and 9th. That's what we're looking at here. There's also a thread the needle event shown here on multiple models. This is the European model from last night. This is January 7th, evening of January 7th. This is the January 7th, 8th time frame. It's the same thing you'll see on the GFS, or I mean, it's the general, same general idea on the GFS and the Canadian model. So all three of them have it. They all have that storm signal there. Whether or not this occurs, it's too far to really say. Uh, but the signal is there, and there is a thread the needle possibility during that time frame. Give or take a day or two on the front or back end here, but it looks like it's going to be within that window to coincide with the cold air that we're expecting. So this is a thread the needle situation, just like you had in 2016, although this won't be quite as extensive. It's a little more progressive and fast moving. This low actually originates down here and kind of continues out here like this, okay? So you would get snow up in here in these regions. If that were the case, long ways away, we're not there on the specific ship, but at least there's a signal there and you can get something like that in an otherwise crappy pattern. Okay. So Managelian oscillation, this is looking at the Managelian oscillation for the next couple of weeks. You do have that window of cold here because in part 
phase 7 and phase 8 here, and then there's a little bit of a lag, so that's going to take about a week to get here and affect our sensible weather. But you have that uh, going through those colder phases, then it collapses in the circle of death, and then eventually emerges into the La Nina phases, the maritime continent. So eventually you're going to be in the warm phases here. This goes out to January 12th and stops. It doesn't go any further than that. So by the time you get into uh, past January 10th, you're into the warmer phases again. Phase 5, Phase 6 are warmer phases, but it's going to start curling back here and eventually make its way back toward this region again, and that's going to be the end of the month. That's when we get there. This is only goes through January 12th, so by January 12th, you're still in Phase 5. Eventually, you can see these little spaghetti plots here are suggesting it's a continue into Phase 6 and maybe Phase 7 and Phase 8 by the time we get to the end of the month. Look at these phases here. These are Phase 5, Phase 6 are warm, Phase 7, 8 are cold, so you get the colder phases here. This is why we're getting that cold shot. One, two, three, maybe four days. That's it. All right. Once it collapses, still strong polar vortex. So that's going to allow that ridge, the southeast ridge, to build up again. And then once you get to phase five, phase six, you're in the warmer phases again. That's going to be weeks two and three of January. Actually, uh, from past the 10th to about the maybe 24th or so. Once you get past that point, then you can, might get over here in the colder phases again. This is the same thing that happened in our number one analog year, 2014. You were in these, uh, January was the same thing. We were in the circle of death a lot, in the maritime continent phases, getting into the western Pacific. These are the warmer phases. It didn't really spend too much time in any colder phases in January at all. Matter of fact, we had to wait till February for that to happen, which is indicated by the green here. The red is the January, okay? And then March was very cold. March was very cold, okay? This is still, we're still on track for the rest of winter. It's just, it's not a matter of, uh, is it going to happen? It's just a matter of uh, you we're pushing it back by about a week from what we saw in January 2014. Okay, so January 2014, 13th and four, or, excuse me, 2013, 2014 analog, which was our number number one analog for winter. So a cold November, which we had, a warmer than average December, which we had slightly, but we did, and it was slightly then. Okay, then we turn to January, turn much colder, and it, it will do this eventually. It's just going to be happening. A week later than it happened in 2014, we think. And then February was cold with a lot of snow as well. I took this little tidbit off the, uh, this is archive stuff here, okay? This is the, this is taken Allentown, Lehigh Valley International Airport. And I use this because it's the center most point uh, of our coverage area, okay? We cover four states, but this is probably the center most point. And look how 2014 played out in January. You had an early thread the needle storm here between the 2nd and 3rd of January, okay? Models are projecting this year to be 7th and 8th. So you're almost a week behind that, okay? And you got some decent snowfall out of that. Uh, here in Allentown, it looks like they had about 7.2 inches there, okay? And then it warmed up, and it cooled down. Then it warmed up. So you have these you have these cold shots in here, but you have yet look at the look at these temperatures. I saw highlighted in here in red here. You had some very warm temperatures coming in here in the first half of the month, and then the flip occurred right around the 17th, where I had this line. After that, it was cold. And much colder than average okay so the month as a whole finished below average this is delayed by about a week from that year okay so we're probably shooting for around the 24th or thereabout somewhere around there where any flip would occur so i'm thinking about maybe the last week of the month we have this flip to a more consistently cold pattern that will stay in place okay why am i holding to that well sea surface temperature anomalies are almost identical there's some slight variation here, but this is pretty darn close to, to December 2013 versus the present. This is a present snapshot of what the sea surface temperature anomalies are compared to what we have now. And you have all these features here that are pretty much there. The major players of the features, including the uh, El Nino regions, are almost identical. So this is a very close match still to 2013. So there's no reason to abandon this, and there's no reason to think we won't flip eventually. Uh, we did have a strong polar vortex in early January as well in 2014 that did break down. It just did so a week earlier, okay? And then uh, longer-term ensembles are looking like this. We have that southeast ridge coming back here. Uh, after that period of the 6th through 9th or, about, or, or 10th or thereabout, after that we flip to... Uh, a southeast ridge dominated pattern here where we have the warmer temperatures come in but this is going to be critical here uh, this uh, ridging if we can get this a little bit further east and into Alaska it's going to shove everything else east and you're going to develop a cross polar flow and at the uh, polar vortex can break down like we think it will and while or the way it's projected to very long term second half of the month it'll be easier to get this uh, cold air to slide eastward so this is why I'm thinking the last week of January 
uh, might not be as warm as we indicated in the long range table. We see a flip somewhere around the 24th or maybe around that within a couple of days of that. OK, so we'll reexamine that throughout the month. And we'll adjust as needed. OK, but I do think the warmth is coming back. The milder than average temperatures will come back after the 10th of the month once that trough lifts out. Maybe we get a storm in there. Maybe we don't. We'll see. Uh, but this is a big part of what happened in 2000. Uh, 14 in January 2014 when we had that flip you had that ridge building into the Gulf of Alaska and then you started getting a cross polar flow here where you get the cold air bleeding into uh, first the upper Midwest and the plains and moving down into the Ohio Valley and Northeast with time uh, this is going to happen eventually at some point and some longer term ensembles are indicating that we will start flipping to a negative VPO eventually and this is what's going to change it this is what dominated 2014 and once we get this uh, negative EPO in here, it was cold straight through straight, straight through the month of March. It was very cold. So I do think it's going to come. It's just delayed a little bit. And I don't want to spook anybody there and say, OK, well, January. I know I probably said I punted January. Overall, that's the case. There can still be still be some thread the needle situations like between the 6th and 9th. And again, the last week of the month heading into February, I think you're going to have a flip somewhere in there that's going to be more semi-permanent going into the month of February and perhaps even March. We're going to crawl, cross that bridge of March down the road a little bit. That's a little too far yet. Uh, overall, model, model than average January, with the exception of the cold shot, January 6th to 10th, and again, the end of the month. I added this end of the month in here because I do think it's going to flip somewhere around the 24th, give or take a few days. Okay. Polar vortex will break down during the second half of January, which will allow that negative EPO to get established and get that cross polar flow is turn the Arctic oscillation from positive to negative. We get some cold temperatures in here. And as long as you have the cold in place, you have a fighting shot for any storms. You don't need below average temperatures necessarily in the month of January to get snow. You can have near average and it still works because it's the coldest month of the year. We are going to be watching a storm signal in the January 7th and 8th time frame that has been showing up here. Uh, again, it's not a foregone conclusion this is going to happen. This is at max range and the models are still guessing and changing and things like that. Could we have a storm in there? Yes. Uh, it has to coincide with that cold air. Uh, and again, it's 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 too far out there for any specifics, but we're going to be watching that here in the week ahead. That'll be our next signal that we're going to be watching. If it doesn't happen, that's fine. Uh, we still have a flip too colder here at the end of the month going to February. I think we still have plenty of snow to come. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That's this edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, December 29th. Join us again next week. We'll have a new outlook for hopefully a better look at the end of the month period for January. As we get closer, we'll be able to narrow that down a little bit. And uh, we'll be talking certainly about this system right here and this uh, cold period next week because that will be right on our doorstep at that point. Take care and go birds.